Welcome to Briar News. In this video, there are a bunch of new Briar releases to show, one of which is a Briarfest model, so we're going to start off with that one. But we also have new regular run releases and the special runs for the Seattle Soray. First off, the Briarfest 2020 Sunday raffle model, Fields of Heather. Heather found abundantly growing in the wild in Scotland. It covers approximately 5 million acres of the land is one of the nation's national flowers and the Scots have found many uses for it. From bringing good luck to brides to aromatherapy, it also features prominently in Scottish folklore tales. The lithe and athletic Akultecki mold number 805 was sculpted by Briar's own Heather Paleo and will debut next month as our first Premier Club model of 2020. He is finished for our lucky Sunday raffle winners in an eye-catching bay varnish blanket Appaloosa and now represents the unique Naz Pierce horse. He is fully decked out with amazing details from his motled nose to his detailed toes and with plenty of mapping and spots in between. I was guessing that this new Akultecki mold would be one of the raffle models and what do you know, here he is! And I can tell you right now that I absolutely love this model. There's not too many Briarfest raffle models that I'm like really, really in love with. Of course, they're all usually gorgeous, but there's none I usually would be willing to spend like a lot of money on. However, this guy, oh my gosh, I am just in love with this guy. He is so gorgeous. I'm loving this new mold from these photos, and I just absolutely love this guy's coloring. I'm loving this Appaloosa pattern, and the coloring is really nice too. He's got some really nice highlights on his neck. I love when the Appaloosa markings make those little jaggedy rib-like marks that he has here. I'm not sure if there's a specific name for that. I'm sure there probably is, but I really like that. I think it's really fun. And I just like how complex the white markings are on the edges. They're very jaggedy. There's just a lot of detail in this guy, more than your typical Briar model because these guys are so limited and have more time taken in painting them and such. There's just so much detail on him. There's a lot of mapping on the spots and there's even little speckles on the model for that varnishy look. You can see it mostly on his shoulder and his belly. His mane and tail are also fantastic with just a little bit of white nicely blended into the black. Even more awesome details are those striped hooves and the mottling on his muzzle and around his eyes. The more I look at him, the more I love him. I usually don't put very much money into the Briarfest raffles, but this year I think I'm going to have to put in more than just a few dollars worth because I really would like to have this guy. He is just stunning. Moving on now to the new Briar regular run releases for spring 2020. Now keep in mind that these just came out and it will take a bit before Briar and Briar dealers actually get them in and have them for sale. Some Briar dealers have been doing pre-orders on them already and I've seen some people kind of freaking out because the pre-orders have sold out. But don't worry, these models just came out. There's still other Briar dealers out there that will have them in store or for sale online later on or something. And they will also end up being on Briar's website, so don't worry. These guys are not going to be unobtainable models. First is the model Winx. This model was actually leaked quite a while ago on a Briar dealer's website by mistake. But now we finally have the official info on her. Winx is a portrait model of the famous Australian racehorse Winx and is on the Emerson mold. I already know I need like three of this model because I'm currently in love with this mold and I want some extras for customizing. She is a simple dark bay, but in this stock photo it looks like she has some really nice shading going on. She isn't just like a solid flat color, she's got a lot of shading and highlights. She also has a brand on her shoulder, which the real life horse has, although in the photos it appears to be a lot less prominent on the real horse. Maybe they should have toned down the color a little bit more of that brand. But otherwise, I think this model is just super awesome and I'm really looking forward to getting it. Next is a new decorator model called Crystalline. Now this one is actually a limited edition of 4000, but she is being released as a regular run, not a flagship store special or anything like that. And 4000 is quite a bit. I don't think she's going to be like super crazy hard to get. Now Briar does say this model is a mare, but it almost looks like this is a stallion or the gelding version in this one picture we have. But Briar is saying that it's a mare, so the actual release must be a mare and maybe this is actually a test model that they have this picture of, where it's maybe actually the gelding or stallion version. 
but she is a very pretty glossy and colorful pinto decorator on the goffert mold. She's got a very pretty turquoise that fades into purple and then into a magenta color and then into a light pink. I'm really liking her. I think she's a very fun decorator and she is one I'm probably going to have to get as well. Lastly, for regular runs, some stable mates were spotted at Walmart recently, as someone shared on Facebook. There are three new stable mates, what appears to be a liver chestnut gypsy vanner, a palomino lusitano, and a trotting paint horse. Now let's move on to the Seattle Saray model releases. The Seattle Saray is the special collector club event that was supposed to take place this year in May. Only 200 people are able to go to these special collector club events that Briar has about every two years. Because of the current world situation, the Seattle Soray was canceled and Briar offered ticket holders the chance to either refund their ticket but have a spot for the next collector club event or keep their ticket and get the event models plus the chance to purchase the Briar Boutique special runs. I was fortunate enough to be one of the ticket holders and I did decide to keep my ticket so I will be getting some of these models. These are the two event models that everyone that kept their ticket will be getting. Red Mint was revealed a while ago, but this is the first time the Stablemate model Pugent has been shown. There are only 200 made of each model. Red Mint is a glossy chestnut on the Bristol mold, and Pugent is a glossy Pinto Stablemate on the Jumping Stablemate mold. Then we go on to the Briar Boutique models. Now how these work is a little bit like Briarfest special runs, but also a little bit different. Each person can purchase two of these models, but they can only purchase one model from group A and then one model from group B. There is also like a virtual line and drawing system for these models, where if a model sells out, it sells out and you have to pick from the other model or models. The whole system is described more in depth from Briar. But since only the Seattle Soray ticket holders can purchase these guys, I won't go over the complete details of that. Instead, let's talk about each of these individual models. There are six total, and there are 104 or less made of each of these, which means they are very limited and therefore very expensive and sought after. Each model is named after something to do with Washington and the Seattle area. First are the two models in Group A. Bellevue and Nirvana, which means each ticket holder will be getting one of these two models. Bellevue is named for the Seattle suburb that the Seattle Soray would have taken place at. There are a hundred and four of him made. Bellevue is an interesting model because he is playing homage to vintage models and history. It says he's been finished off to a chalky dappled gray with a twist. And he's a genuine chalky. We utilized models that were molded in Wayne, New Jersey out of a mix of virgin and regrind cellulose acetate, and the unpainted pieces are in various shades of gray. To show off this feature, we left the hooves unpainted, making each one super unique, and they have the USA mold mark. It also says that due to the nature of this older white wear, they have a lot more character and a truly vintage appeal. That means that the pieces may be a little rough on some of the seams compared to other modern releases, and we do not consider those flaws. So it sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it kind of sounds like these are actually vintage semi-rearing Mustangs that were molded in gray plastic that Briar recently painted. So they're like vintage molded plastic, but with a fresh modern paint job. At least that's what it sounds like. But regardless, it is a really neat that these models' hooves are actually unpainted bare plastic that's gray. If you zoom in on the picture, you can kind of see the difference on the rest of the painted model and the hooves. You can also see the areas where the seams are rougher than today's modern briars. This is a really interesting model, and I'm sure a lot of vintage collectors are going to like this guy. For myself personally, I like him. I really like all the briar history surrounding him. But I'm not sure if this is a model I would necessarily keep in my collection. I like the semi-rearing stallion and have a few of him. And his color is pretty, but he's not one of my favorite vintage molds. If this was like on the Adios mold, for example, I would love to have it. But since I don't have a lot of attachment to this particular mold, he's not one I'm super excited about. The second model in Group A is Narvana of 96 made. And this guy was in fact named after the band. It says Seattle was the birthplace of the grunge rock music movement, so this handsome fellow pays tribute to these cultural icons. 
This is on the braided version of the Eidicus mold. It says he's been reimagined as a shaded black blanket Appaloosa, complete with subtle mottling around his mouth and dark striped hooves. Now this is a model that I really like. I actually think this is my favorite model out of all the Seattle Saray models. I'm really digging this shaded black look and the blanket Appaloosa markings and the fact he has mottling on his muzzle. I just think he is really cool looking and I really hope I can get one of these guys. While I don't actively collect the Eidicus mold, I do like it and I just, I think he's very pretty. This is a really cool model. Let's move on to the models in Group B. There are four total. The first one is Pincho. There are 60 made of him. He is named after one of the oldest national forests in the country. The Grifford Pincho National Forest is located in the southwestern corner of the state, just south of Seattle. He is on the Legionero, how do you pronounce that, mold and has been painted in a rich chocolate palomino, an unusual but striking color found occasionally in the Lusitano breed. For me personally, I wish I liked this model more because I love the Legion Legionero, Legion however you say his name, I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce anything, but I like that mold. I have a few on it and I really love it, but I feel like this color doesn't suit him as well as it should for some reason. I'm not sure why I want to love this guy. I really, really do. But for some reason, he doesn't wow me. I still, of course, like him. I don't think he's not a pretty model or anything like that. I just wish I liked him more. Next is a model I do really, really like, and that is Storm, and not just because of his name. He is limited to only 52 models. When I saw his name, I first assumed he was named after the weather in Washington, because it is very stormy and rainy there a lot, but he's actually named after the female athletes representing Seattle in basketball. He is done on the Ashquire mold and is a dark rose dappled gray. I think this is my favorite model out of all the models in group B. I just love his coloring. It's the kind of rose dappled gray that I like seeing on models. I just love the contrast of the light light belly and then the dark shading on his back and all the black points. His tail is super neat with that black and gray fade to white. He is just very lovely. The only thing I would wish different on him is that if his socks were masked off instead of having the soft airbrush edges. I'm just not generally a fan of the airbrush white markings as much, but otherwise I am really really liking this model and I really hope I can get one. The third model in Group B is Duwamish, who is limited to 48 pieces. It says there are many places in Seattle named to honor the indigenous peoples of that area who have lived in the region continuously for over 10,000 years. He is on the Dundee mold and is painted as a buckskin framovero. This is my second favorite of the Group B models. He is a pretty cool looking model. He's got one blue eye on one side and one brown eye on the other and some really cute spotting on his lip. There's some really neat jaggedy edges on the white markings and it looks like he'll have some darker shading on his back, I hope anyway, because I love it when a model has really dark shading on their back. I'm also loving the mix of the white and black in his mane. That looks really neat. In a way, I kind of wish he wasn't so dramatic on those white markings. Like, I wish he had a little bit more coloring on his shoulders instead of it just being mostly white. But that's just a personal nitpicky aesthetic preference. I do really like him, and he's definitely my second choice of these Group B models. I'd be very glad to have him. Lastly is Olympia, who is actually the lowest run of the Seattle Soray models of only 40. She is, of course, named after the capital of Washington, done on the Marabella mold in a soft, shimmery perlino with minimal Sabino expression, including a sock, three high whites, and a large snip. I quite like this girl. I already like the Marabella mold. And of course, this color just looks amazing on pretty much any mold. You can put this color on any mold and I think it would look beautiful. The choice of her being a minimal Sabino is interesting. I actually would have loved to see a belly spot on her because I love Sabino belly spots. But she is really cool. She has striking blue eyes and I like how pink the white marking on her muzzle is. That looks really cute. I rather like her. She's not my first choice, but I certainly wouldn't mind having her in my collection. Now I believe that is all for the new Briar releases and reveals right now. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are about these models. Let me know which one is your favorite. 
Do you plan on getting either of the two new regular run traditional models? Thank you for watching and subscribe to keep up with all the latest Briar news. I also will be getting some of the Seattle Saray models and when I do I will be doing a big unboxing video of those so keep an eye out for that. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye everyone!